how to make drums sound really, really, fucking big. And I think I've made the biggest drum sound I've ever heard. The thing is. It doesn't have a single drum in it. For users of concussion drums, I just want to fill you in on some stuff that you may not have noticed. One of the things about concussion drums we're really excited about is the ability to map your own drums, but because it's a self-contained environment with transient designers and different mic positions and different ways of tuning and smashing the drums, we can also create our own preset and preset packs and share them with each other. So if you haven't picked up Andy Gray's or Snakes of Russia's packs, go to the website, add them to your cart, go to the checkout, they don't cost any money, download them, and then it's simply a case of placing them in your concussion presets folder. And I thought I'd do a preset pack, what I call my, my secret source. Basically what I've done is a, a, an interesting collection of drums, but the thing that makes them sound big is that I've aligned them all differently. So this lever pre-delays the actual transient by up to 100 milliseconds so that you can get the swipe of the beater or the, the very beginning of the note before you get the actual transient. By adjusting this for every drum, it creates a flam. Now, if you imagine a stadium full of people going gung, 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 gung. Now, if every single transient was aligned to the, to the grid, every single clap, every single foot stamp, it wouldn't sound that big at all. What makes it sound enormous is the gung, 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 gung. And I thought I'd imitate that with these different alignments. So that's called army attack. Then we have human attack. And again, you'll just see a variety of different alignments there. Prison attack. Sounds like people kind of banging their dinner trays. Then I've also created some with really big reverbs. But again, with all of these different alignments, has a fireworky nature to it, which is why I've called it the tattoo. Toms. The mistake I think a lot of people make when programming these big, enormo widescreen drums is to use the really bassy stuff. And what tends to happen when you're working on action sequences is those become muddy. It doesn't necessarily give a sense of scale. So this is when toms are really useful because they have a real crack of a transient attack. And again, the looseness makes you feel like there's a, a whole bunch of people playing them. But this is when we start getting really big. And it was something that the team here really questioned when I suggested that we got a string section in to be part of this percussion library. Everything you're about to hear is strings. These are colenios that have been, as you can see, tuned to loads of different pitches, but also aligned very differently. <laughs> So that's the Colenios. And then this is a mixture of jeté and staccatos. Finally, I've just taken the same sound, replicated it across the eight tracks, done different alignments and loads of different pitches, Bartok pits, uh, or snap pits is where they really pull the string off the fingerboard and let it slap back. And for some reason, musicians never tire of doing this. It always makes them smile. But check this out.
which for me is the best of all worlds. It has a fat bottom end. It has this huge spread that sounds like, you know, a couple of hundred players, but also that really bright transient that'll cut through. And what's incredible about that sound is it doesn't feature a single drum. The other half of my Secret Source collection are my stemmed drums. Uh, these may be titled differently in the release version. This is how mix engineers, music editors, and dubbing engineers like things to be stemmed. Now, this is very broad. You can combine some of these, but this is basically me organizing this, uh, the concussion drums into uh, a convenient pre-stemmed format. So we have the high strikes. low mid strikes, the low strikes, so the idea is you can use two fingers, metal strikes, and there's a second metal strikes one there, mid strikes, and finally your wood strikes. I find when working with a mix engineer, giving them enormous, like 700 multi-tracks is a serious waste of their time. So grouping things into these broad stems, which maybe they will break down into fewer stems, like a high, mid, low percussion stem for the music editor and the dubbing engineer is the best way to go. And this is all about having a conversation amongst the people who are involved in these projects. And I would say the earlier you have these conversations, the better. If you don't make these conversations or considerations foundational at the beginning of a project, it can cause you a lot of time and confusion further down the line. So these stems offer you a foundational starting point with your percussion. If you want to grab my secret sources alongside Andy Gray's and Snakes of Russia's uh, preset packs, then simply click on the link below to direct you to the concussion product page. Now, we've got something really exciting happening with concussion on Monday, and I'll be making a video putting it out on Tuesday to show you how to use this exciting thing. So if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, now's the time to do that and ding the bell to be notified when I put that video up. Thanks for watching to the end. Enjoy my secret sauce. <laughs>